today we are going to discuss about definitions nature and scope of management from the management subject so welcome to my youtube channel mechanical engineering management let's start with the first question definition of management by different experts so let's see one by one the different definition by the different experts first according to f w taylor Management is an art of knowing what to do, next when to do and at last see that it is done in the best and cheapest way. So it is really very simple definition. Management is an art of knowing what to do, when to do and see whatever it may be done must be in the best and cheapest way. So this is the definition by the F.W. Taylor. Now the definition by the next expert according to Mary Parker Follett. Management is an art of getting things done through people. So really it is very simple definition. Management is an art actually of getting things done through the people. Next definition. According to Henry Fire, management is to forecast or even say estimate, to plan, to organize, to command, to coordinate and to control activities of others. So this is also very good definition. It covers all the points. Management is to estimate, plan, organize, command, coordinate and to control activities of others. So these are really very simple definition of the management. Now next question nature or you can say features or you can say characteristics of management. So basically there are eight types of the natures of management. Let's see one by one first management is an universal process. Next, management is a continuous process and we will see later on each eight different characteristics briefly one by one. Next, management is intangible. Management is a social process. Management is an art and science. Management is goal oriented. Management is a group activity. And at last, management is being creative. So let's see one by one all these eight different characteristics of the management. So let's see first, management is a universal process. The basic principle of management given by Henry Foyle is universal in nature. Very simple, management is actually universal in nature. That means it has the same applicability all over the world. Next, this principle is equally applicable in different organizations, businesses, government departments and others. And that's why it is called as the universal process because of you can apply this principle equally in different organizations, business, government departments, etc. Next, second one. Management is a continuous process. So name itself indicate management is an ongoing process. That means it is continuous process in the organization. The cycle of management continues to operate as long as the organization exists. That means if the organization is there, management must be there. The main objective of this continuous process of management is to make small and progressive changes and that actually must be required with respect to the time that will provide greater value in the long run or you can say in another word the business can survive for example Paytm is making the ventures with all type of business units such as schools universities and other companies and professionals to provide a single platform for all payment solution. So this is actually the continuous process by the Paytm. 
नेक्स्ट थर्ड वन मैनेजमेंट इज इंटेंजिबल सो लेट स्टार्ट विथ फर्स्ट मीनिंग ऑफ इंटेंजिबल सो इंटेंजिबल मीन्स एनीथिंग विच कैन नॉट बी सीन एंड टच इट कैन बी फेल्ड ऑनली सो मैनेजमेंट इज एन अनसीन एंड इनविजिबल फोर्स सो यू कैंट सी और यू कैंट विजुअलाइज दैट्स वाइट इज कोल्ड एज अनसीन एंड इनविजिबल फोर्स इट कैन नॉट बी सीन बट इट प्रेजेंट्स कैन बी फेल्ड एवरीवेयर इन द फॉर्म ऑफ रिजल्ट नेक्स्ट फोर्थ वन मैनेजमेंट इज ए सोशल प्रोसेस मैनेजमेंट इज डन बाय पीपल through people and for the people that's why it is called as this social process so again see very interesting sentence management is done by people through people and for the people next management is a social process because it deals with the people it is concerned with making the best use of human effort managers have to create cooperation among employees in an organization next fifth one management is an art and science management involves a systematic body of theoretical knowledge as well as the practical experience of such knowledge and that's why it is called as art and science it is actually the systematic body of theoretical knowledge that's why it is called as the science and practical experience that's why you can say it is the art management is the art of arts because it organizes and uses human talent it is also science because management follows a systematic method to find a possible solution for a problem so it's not a trial and error but it having a systematic approach so you can say it is a science next one six management is goal oriented so obviously name itself indicate and as you know that management is always goal oriented the existence of management is for the sole purpose that means we can say in another word unique purpose of achieving the organizational goals management directs the energy of all human resources available in the organization towards the accomplishment of the predetermined goals so in short we can say management directs all the energies of the human resources to accomplish the predetermined goal for example reliance jio what is the goal of reliance jio it came up with a goal to capture whole telecommunication industry and to get the highest market share next seventh one management is group activity management requires group efforts in order to achieve the common objectives of the organization people generally join groups to achieve what they cannot achieve individually so very simple if the people cannot do individually then definitely they are more interested to join in the group group activity is required in all areas of human activity now at last management is being creative the proper management means attaining the organizational objectives with the highest efficiency at the minimum possible cost that's why it is called as the creative the basic aim of management is the optimum utilization of the available resources by means of innovation and creative ideas so it is very important the basic aim of management is always the optimum utilization of the resources by means of innovation and creative ideas effectiveness and efficiency are the two pillars on which the managerial performance is based now the last question scope of management 
there are basically four wide scope of management in fact there are so many scope of management but these are the four wide scope first one is a production management second one is a marketing management third one is a finance and accounting management and last one personnel and human resource management so let's see one by one first production management so here you can see from the figure whenever there is a production based industry so at that time this is the very crucial scope of management production means creation of utilities by converting raw material into final product by various scientific methods and regulations next area of management which deals with the production is known as production management next second one marketing management so you know that there are lots of company having marketing management as a main pillar marketing management involves distribution of the product to the buyers or you can say to the customers next third one finance and accounting management for each and every company this is very essential management department financial and accounting management deals with the managerial activities related to obtaining and utilization of fund for the business in short you can say this is the management which deals with the utilization of fund for the business purpose last one personal and human resource management so in this figure you can see human resource that is actually deal with the new recruitment train the staff evaluate them and promote them similarly in this figure you can see personal management and human resource management are actually two sides of the one coin personal management is essentially workforce centered whereas human resource management is resource centered so human resource management provides the well trained persons in the company whereas personal management manage the workforce at the different area or different location of the company so in short you can say personal management is essentially workforce centered whereas human resource is resource centered if you have any question then write in the comment box i will be back thanks my dear friends for watching this video press the like button to appreciate it